Hello, hello. So today it's a big one. It's about rotoscoping. Um, if you've been here for a while, you must have noticed that I use it all the time. This is a ve very, very versatile effect. You can use it for lots of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I tend to use it quite a bit. And I still do get questions about it, so I figured I'd make a video about it. So first, what is rotoscoping? Rotoscoping is basically a mask that's gonna either hide or show a specific part of your image. So let's say I make a color clip. Let's make it like red or something like to really see the difference. Yellow, yellow is great. So I'll add my I'll add my yellow clip to my timeline. So now it's all yellow. And if I go in Alpha and Transform and select rotoscoping and drag it onto my clip, I now have rotoscoping here onto the clip. And it says here when you here click to add points, right click to close shape. So basically that's what you do. So let's say you want to make a specific shape. You just make your shape, whatever shape you want, and you can see it. So um, right now the background is black. If I change it to maximum, I'm not sure what it does. Honestly, like, it looks like nothing. So yeah, not maximum. Minimum is good. Um, so this is the basic one. This will work the best if you want to show what's inside. And add does also nothing. And subtract shows only what's outside. Then you can also change the feather width. So like, yeah, you can see it kind of, it makes the edge blurry. And you can also change the passes. The passes don't change anything if you didn't change the width before. And it makes it also bigger, but like, it's different, you know? You can see it doesn't look quite the same when I change it here and here. So you can just adjust it and see how it looks best for you. So this is a random thing, but let me show you how you can use it with an example. So you, goodbye. I have taken a little clip here of my friend Luther from the Angular Academy. I'll just drag it in. Control C. I don't want the audio, I just take the video. Uh, so here he is. And let's say I want to show him in a Polaroid. So do I like the size of this? I kind of like it actually, but just let's just change it a bit just to say that we've changed it. You can change it with transform, you can maybe rotate it a little. I don't know, you do whatever. And then I'm gonna add a rotoscoping effect to Luthor. The thing is, now that I've made the Polaroid frame rotate, I need Luthor to rotate as well, because else it's not like straight. Well, it could be a thing, like, oh, I took the the photograph not straight, but like, if you want it to be straight like this, the same way, you need to add the transform, and it needs to be higher than the rotoscoping. And then you can add points for the rotoscoping. Right now, if I click it, it will be with the transform. I need to click on the rotoscoping effect and then add the points to make the shape and close it. And now it's here. So one could say, well, I could use the alpha shapes for this, no? And I would say, yes, but it's way harder to use because you have to input numbers and stuff. And this, you can just click and see it's way easier. So that's why I use it mostly. Um, I can just remove this point because I don't use it. And like right now, if I play it let me and select any, everything, it will just play and Luthor is in the frame. So this is a first example for something quite easy, simple. Uh, now I'm going to remove this because I don't care. I'm going to remove both of the effects and I'm going to be like, oh, you goodbye, I said. Oh, but what if he could be an like not on the moon but somewhere else so i'm gonna use rotoscoping again and now i'm gonna make it go faster because this is gonna take a while i'm gonna control him oops um yeah like uh select him so you can zoom in for that that might help 
to be a bit more precise. And then you can move the points until you have everything done. Okay, so if I unzoom a little, it's nice. The one thing you can see though is that here it's quite square. So once you've finished making your mask, um, you can actually change the points. So if I go to the frame, uh, you can see that there's little points here now, and you can move them, and that makes uh, curves. And so you can adjust all of them. And right now, you can see, like, I don't see the other part, so I'm not sure where it's supposed to be, so you can change the mode here and put it to maximum. That's one use for it. And now you can see where the border really is. I think that might be good. I'm gonna set it back to minimum, because minimum is good. You unzoom. And then if I remove, it's way better. So if I go back to the frame I was at, I can add a little bit of feathering, maybe. Uh, just a tiny little bit. And one thing though is that I did one frame. You need to do like all of them. Um, this is gonna take a while. I am lazy. So I will not do it all. <laughs> but I will show you how to make it better. So first you can just move it a bit yourself. So you can adjust it as best as possible. But like, of course, it won't fit exactly. And then you just change all of the points. Let's do this. And you might be wondering, yes, I have done this for real projects before. Yes, it takes a while, but it's worth it in the end, you know. Yeah, and try to put one point in the same place that it was before. Like, if there's a turn or something, try to keep the, the points at the same places roughly, you know. Because else it can look weird in between. Because anyway, I said every, every point. You don't have to do every point. You just have to do enough that it doesn't show that it's not every point. So like, I'm not sure if it's very clear. Uh, wait, let me finish this little one. Okay, it will be not that pretty because I'm a bit lazy. I go back, put it to minimum, and then if I press play, it will switch between the two, and it's really not that bad, honestly, like, I thought it would be worse. Uh, I guess I should put another one at least at the end, but I'm not gonna do that right now, I'm just gonna cut it short. <laughs> I go to this one, one frame more, and goodbye, yes, um, so it's not that bad for this part, it's not great, but you know. Um, so you could use this for many, many things. Uh, for example, you can do Ctrl C, Ctrl V, uh, remove the rotoscoping on the bottom one, and then you can add some blur in the background to add some fake depth of field. Um, this was actually a request and I figured I could do both at once. Um, what the fuck is happening? I don't want that much blur. <laughs> Okay, like, hey, it's way more blurry in the background now. Um, what you might want to do is make this frame a little bit bigger, just so that... Um, like, if there's f part of him we can see because of the blur, then you wouldn't be seeing him. So like, if you do 105 maybe, and then it hides everything. So yeah, that works. To do fake depth of field. You might also be like, hey, I wish he wasn't on the moon, like I said earlier. I wish he was, um, I don't know, let's find another moment in the episode. Come on. Oh yeah, he's gonna be uh, wherever she is. Oh wait. I guess I'll just take this, move it a bit, and group this because I don't want the freaking... Okay. It's gonna be here. Okay, there's somebody else in the background, and like, I can just adjust it with transform a little. 
because I would need it to be a bit bigger so that you can hide him. 120 with him. And yay, he's in another place now. Isn't the photoscoping great? So that's like what it's normally used for. I use it for a lot of other stuff. Um, so I think we can say goodbye to him today. And we'll be like doing some text. So project at title clip. This is text. Yes, I'm inspired, I know. And you wa might want to be like, hey, I want to make something cool. Um, so I add rotoscoping. And then you can make it come like Minimum, as always. Remove this point, it's useless. Um, it will be like a wipe, but it's not straight. So like, you can make it go like... Wait, actually, in the middle I will put a point and it will go like here. And I want it like a bit wavy or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. And then another kind of wave here. And at the end, I'll show everything. And so this will make cool text. Well, it's kind of slow, but it doesn't have to be that slow. So like, if we make it go a bit faster, because nobody wants text to come that slowly. This will go like... That's cool, isn't it? And... I could be like, oh, wait, I want the exact opposite of that. I want it to come from the other side. And you can just switch from minimum to subtract. And then you will hide it. Okay. Um, you could also decide that you want it to go the other way around. So you can make those keyframes move. You should be able to at least. Uh, maybe the first one you can't move, but you can move these ones. And then you can just remove the first one, except you can't in this version. Well, you can just put it to the end, because it's just, I mean, it's, it's simple, simple keyframes. Then this one you put at the end, uh, and you change it to this side. And now it goes the other way around. Well, um, I guess I'm gonna move the key from it a bit because I don't want it to be too slow again, but that's good stuff. I mean you can do whatever you want with that. It's the it's amazing. Um so you've done like some kind of kind of transition but with text, but you can also do it with images. So like now I have some text and I have an image. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm just taking the most random things I have. And I want the image to appear. Come on. And maybe you don't have um, a wipe that does what you want. So you can do it with rotoscoping. So like you want an explosion, kind of like a star. So you can make a little shape. So I will add a keyframe like here that will be this one. And here I will just zoom in and put all of the points in the middle and then a bit like here everything will have appeared so I will make it so if you want something to go in the other direction zoom out again and you can put this further if you don't think it's like where you want you can just use these little things on the side okay let's see what that looks like I go here uh, I might zoom in again so you can see better. And phew, big explosion, kind of. And here again, you could like change the feather width and passes. I'm not sure. I don't like it like this, but you could. You can do it. Um, you can also decide like, hey, I wish like there were two at once. So like you can just insert another track. Uh, add another color clip, uh, maybe not black, uh, blue. 
And I'm just gonna copy and paste the effects from here. I'll just drag and drop. That work. I will add the transform on the other one. And we'll make the yellow one a tiny bit bigger. Like 105%. And now I have some sort of border, maybe a bit more than 5 actually, 108. And maybe move it a tiny bit to the right or to the left, I don't know. And like, you can have them both at once. It could be some kind of style, you know. So yeah, you can do lots of stuff with that. You could do a border uh, around somebody, like the dude I used earlier, you could put a border around him. Um, you could, I don't know, go wild, you know. I hope this helped. I don't know if I've, um, it was very really useful. I guess I showed you different kind of effects you can do with rotoscoping, so I hope you liked it. And, um, well, I will see you next week, I guess. Bye-bye.